Coming up this week, Perplexity makes a bid for Chrome and releases an impressive new feature. CEOs at Pinterest, Airbnb and Replit react to the disruptive effects of AI agents on their products. And is Apple plotting an AI comeback? Rumors suggest a new product that leverages the company's strengths could be in the pipeline. Stay tuned for all of that and more. And as always, if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, Perplexity is doing an excellent job of keeping itself in the headlines. This week, it released a new update which adds video models to its Pro and Max plans. When combined with the new Comet browser, these video models can perform end-to-end -end tasks. So in this example, shared by one of Perplexity's product managers, Tyler Tate, he shares how you might be able to use this new video functionality to complete a task like posting a property listing online. It takes a static image of a property, then creates a flyover video of it, and then shares that directly on LinkedIn. These end-to-end -end examples of chaining multiple pieces of functionality together are becoming more common, and some engineers are even using Perplexity's Comet to build prototypes that use a combination of Comet and Lovable. In this example, an engineer asked Comet to craft its own prompts and then paste these directly into Lovable to build the required prototype. This week, Perplexity also made a pretty audacious $34.5 billion offer for Google Chrome, which, incidentally, is more than it's raised in funding to date. This offer was made in the context of Google's ongoing antitrust case, where in 2024, the judge overseeing the case issued his ruling finding that Google had illegally maintained monopolies across search and advertising with its exclusionary agreements with partners like Apple and Android device manufacturers. And it is this opportunity that Perplexity is seeking to take advantage of. But commentators say that a forced sale of Chrome is unlikely, with other remedies understood to be the more likely outcome. But whatever happens, Perplexity is seemingly determined to make acquisitions in the space. And according to the information this week, Perplexity also came pretty close to acquiring the Brave browser for $1 billion earlier this year, while OpenAI has held discussions with acquiring the browser company, proving that the browser is still very much at this epicenter of the AI war. With the result of Google's case pending, I do wonder whether Google is willfully making the decision to hold back on adding too many agentic features into Chrome for fears that it may bolster the case against them. And speaking of AI agents, tech CEOs are increasingly having to defend themselves from questions about how AI agents might disrupt their business. This week, Pinterest CEO said that agentic shopping where AI agents shop on behalf of users is still a way off. Speaking during the company's earnings call, he said that I think this notion of an agent just going and buying all of the things for you without you doing anything, I think that's going to be a very, very long cycle for that to play out. And Airbnb's CEO Brian Chesky said that he doesn't think AI agents will turn his business into a commodity and that it is open to integrating with AI agents. He says, I think the key is going to be for us to lead and become the first place for people to book travel on Airbnb. As for whether or not we integrate with AI agents, I think it's something that we're certainly open to. Replit CEO says AI agents are having an impact on his business too. He says that the company is having to evolve its monetization strategy to accommodate AI agents. As a result, it is shifting from flat fee pricing towards effort-based pricing, pegged to how much computing power it took for an agent to complete a task. So it seems that figuring out monetization models on the fly is now just part and parcel of building a product in the AI age. And if you're interested in learning more about how companies are using AI agents in the real world, then head over to Substack this week, where I take a look at over 20 different real world examples of AI agents in action, including internal use cases from Uber, McKinsey, Figma, Walmart, and more. So head over to Substack if you're interested in learning more about that. Meanwhile, it's now been a week since the launch of GPT-5, and it's pretty clear by now that the launch was met with a rather mixed response. But as part of the release, OpenAI invited a bunch of developers to take part in a hackathon and showcase what they were able to build with GPT-5. So I thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the selection of products that were built at the event. Examples include a product called Gen2, which creates digital clones of users that allows e-commerce stores to run live experiments on what types of products their users might find interesting. Another product was something called Fashion AI, which uses diffusion models and GPT-5 to style 3D avatars with AI-powered outfit recommendations, and something called Sheet Codex, which uses Codex for Excel and enables multiple background tasks to run in parallel, answering questions and updating spreadsheet models automatically. OpenAI this week also unveiled a new set of connectors, including support for Gmail, Google Calendar, and Contacts. Once enabled, these connectors let ChatGPT automatically reference 
information from these services in your conversations. In other news this week, fresh details have started to emerge about Apple's next steps in the AI race. Apple is reported to be delaying the rollout of the new AI-powered Siri until 2027, and analysts have welcomed the move if it means avoiding the debacle of the rollout of Apple Intelligence. But there's also been some reports this week that Apple is set to launch a completely new piece of hardware at the same time. Bloomberg suggests that this new device will be a robot that resembles an iPad mounted on a motorized arm. The arm would allow the display to swivel, reposition and extend about half a foot in any direction, meaning it can turn towards people who are speaking or summon its attention, mimicking a human head's movement. Some people are familiar with the product call it the Pixar lamp, referencing the animated lamp from Pixar. And so I asked Perplexity's new video feature to create a video of what this might look like, and here's what it came up with. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use, and we'll start with the company that this week raised a further $35 million in funding, and this is called Profound. And Profound is a product that is designed to help companies increase their product's visibility in AI's tools. So this product allows you to understand how AI crawlers access and interpret your content and potentially unlock new opportunities for visibility in AI tools. It also tracks your presence so you can see how often your brand appears in AI answers and it uncovers citations so that you can find out which websites are driving AI answers about you. So if you're interested in boosting your product's GEO, then take a look at Profound. The next product is something called Sheet Zero. And so Sheet Zero transforms your web pages into structured spreadsheets. So this allows you to basically paste in your query, including the URL that you want to scrape. And then Sheet Zero will transform this into a structured spreadsheet that you can then transform into a table or a database elsewhere to use in your product. So if you're looking for new ways to quickly grab data that you come across on the web, then Sheet Zero could be an interesting one to take a look at. And the final product for this week is something called 16. And this is a distraction blocking app that connects to tools like Linear to reward you only once you've finished completing a task. So I do quite like this idea of improving your ability to focus by linking it to a task that you've finished. So if you're somebody who's always keen to try out new ways to boost your productivity, then maybe 16 is worth checking out. Now let's take a look at some data and trends. And this week, Signalfire released a really interesting new report which analyzes the engineering market. And one of the big takeaways from this report is the analysis which looks at which companies are able to best retain their talent. This report shows that some of the top companies for retention include Google, Snowflake, Nvidia, Meta, Atlassian, and Apple. And some of the reasons for retaining talent include strong technical leadership, career growth beyond the management track, a healthy pace of work and psychological safety, and technical excellence without the chaos. The report also shows that the average retention rate across companies is declining. This graph maps out the average four-year engineering tenure, and you can see that back in 2015, it was almost 60%, and that's dropped to 52.7%. On first glance, this looks like a drop from last year, but from what I can see, 52.7 is higher than 52.4, so I'm not quite sure why the graph is represented in that way. But overall, the trend is from 59.3 down to 52.7 over the last 10 years or so. So if you're interested in learning more about how to retain engineering talent, then this new report from Signifier is definitely worth a look. Another report this week that talks about the state of engineering is a new survey from Clutch. They interviewed over 800 senior developers and managers, and they found that AI is already part of the daily workflow for most developers, with 78% saying they use AI several times a day or week. Perhaps unsurprisingly, coding and implementation remain the top task, with 48% of respondents saying that that is their top task, followed by testing, code review, and requirements gathering. But this is perhaps the most interesting stat of all. 53% of engineers surveyed say that they believe that AI can already code better than humans. But it's not just engineers who are impacted by the use of AI in the workplace. A new study from Workday this week found that 30% of workers would be comfortable being managed by an AI agent. Now, in the promotional materials surrounding this study, Workday has positioned this as evidence that employees don't feel comfortable being managed by AI agents. But I'd argue that 30% of workers saying that they'd be happy to be managed by an AI agent is actually quite high. Other stats from the report worth knowing for product and engineering teams include the stat that 82% of organizations are now expanding their use of AI agents, and fewer than 1% report no plans to use AI agents at all. And finally this week, I'll leave you with the news that downloads for AI companion apps have surged to 220 million users globally, which is up a massive 88% year on year. 
Revenue per download has also more than doubled since 2024, and Character AI CEO told Wired Magazine that it's currently generating revenue at a run rate of $30 million, and it has 20 million monthly active users who spend on average 75 minutes a day chatting with the bot. But if you use AI tools a lot, including companion tools, then here's a cautionary tale worth knowing about. This week, it was revealed that a man managed to give himself AI-induced psychosis. So in this case, a man developed a rare condition called bromism, which is known as a 19th century psychiatric disorder. This was all after ChatGPT advised him to replace his table salt, sodium chloride, with sodium bromide. As a result, he experienced severe symptoms, including hallucinations and paranoia, and he was hospitalized for three weeks. So as more of us become more reliant on these tools, then some of the unintended consequences are now starting to emerge. And on that note, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.